Yep. Thrilled, and here's why. We're in the Doyle dining room with the lady of the house, ladies and gentlemen, Linda Boyd. Of course, we know her as Rose Doyle. Yes. She, she did change your name, right? Uh, I was Rose Miller, and now I'm Rose Doyle. Okay. We got married in second season. Right. Got the ring to prove it. I'm so excited to see you finally because, you know, I feel like you're a kindred spirit. Now oh. you're from the West. Yes, I am. Right? Vancouver. But on uh, CNBC, we celebrate the East Coast, and I think probably uh, more than anybody, you have really, um, well, grabbed a hold, if you will, of, of this city and, and St. John's and really sort of ingrained yourself sp sports-wise. Yeah. Did the regatta twice now. Yeah. Got a silver medal uh, first year and a gold last year, or this year. And that's serious training, Linda It's Boy. serious training, and you know what inspired me was uh, when I first got here to start Doyle, I was the last one cast, right? So they were already shooting when I got this job, and um, I didn't know anything about Newfoundland. Like, I did not really pay attention in high school except to, like, drama. Right. And um, <laughs> so I got a little short history of Newfoundland and Labrador so I could just at least know something about this great place. And a couple of things stood out, like, um, well, the history, like the fact that it's so old here. It's like right. European yeah. history. Yeah. And uh, the regatta had been going on for several decades, and that sounded really cool. So, yeah, so I got involved in that. And It's uh, one thing to read about, but then go, I'm going to do that. I like, don't know. What is wrong with me? I don't know. <laughs> I love it here. I bought a house here just nice. at the base of Signal Hill. Because I love hiking Signal Hill. That's part of my uh, training. Training. For that is training. Oh my God! Hike get... Signal Hill. Hello. We, we row for half an it's hour. It's scary. Just a smidge scary, eh? You got to really. Um, you don't think? Well, if you're not afraid of heights. I usually I am afraid of heights, okay. but when it's when you're like right on the lip, I don't look down. I just <laughs> I kind of look over there somewhere. Okay. And um, I'm quite a klutz actually. I trip on cables around this studio all the time, so I have to be really careful because. Well, it wouldn't be too good if I fell off the side of that no. hill. Although Sean McGinley may argue with that because Sean just decided this season that they should write me out of the show and he's figured out the Stop exact... Stop it. Yeah, but wait. Your demise? <laughs> no. Rose, he's gone. I got it. Episode 9. Rose comes up to Signal Hill parking lot with some important papers for Jake and Mal and she trips and you just see her going off the side of the mountain. Stop. And then we don't realize through episode 10, 11, 12 that she's gone. Episode 13, Malcolm's in the kitchen. It's like, it's a bloody mess. <laughs> Where the hell's Rose? It just occurs to him in episode 13 after. It's so a good thing he's not writing for the year, show. right? I can right. still be Literally hanging off the side of hanger. Signal Hill um, in episode 13. But that's Sean's rich imagination. Right. And we have so much fun together because him and I pretend we can't stand each other. Like, I'll, I'll say, oh, everyone, Sean's coming through. Watch out, there you go. It's going to hit the door frame. But on <laughs> camera, the chemistry oh, is my God. delightful. Oh, thank you. It really no, is. I adore Sean McGinley. Yeah. He is one of the sweetest, kindest people. And yeah, I it's just love great. him. I'm so lucky to have him as a husband. And we're lucky, too. On a very busy shoot day, Mr. McGinley made time to meet. I can't tell you how excited I am to finally get this fella because it's been three years online and now finally with the TV show, I've bagged the big one. Mr. Sean McGinley, how are you? I'm very well, Stephanie. Am I getting too fresh with you there now? Not at all. I, I'm, <laughs> you know, you've made an old man very happy. <laughs> Malachi Doyle, uh, we love you. And I got to tell you, when I saw you guys were retiring, I was a little bit worried. Yeah. But you were back in full force last season. Yeah, yes, uh, we were all a bit worried. Uh, we, no, we you weren't. Uh, we, not really. No. No, I'm just saying that. <laughs> Now your homeland of Ireland. Yeah. Not much difference between no. St. John's. Would that be fair? No. Uh, where I grew up, I grew up in the northwest of Ireland, okay. a place called Donegal, okay. which is a community very similar to this. It was a fishing community up until 10 years ago when the fishing industry went through the floor, Indeed. like it has here. Yeah. But the, I, I found the culture very, like the, geog the, the, the landscape here is very similar. Uh, the climate's very similar. And the people are very similar as yeah. well, you know. If you ask a Donegal person what they do for a living, it's generally more than one thing, you know. And it's right. kind of like here. Yes. I would, you know. A lot so, of hats. So, feel, yeah, exactly. So, I feel very at home here. Oh, very good. Yeah. Now, as far as accent goes, we can hear your lovely uh, homeland yeah. when you speak here. Yeah. Was it difficult? Not really, eh? I, I, I'm usually fairly good at accent. doing accent stuff. Uh, but I found this really difficult because it's so close to my own. Right. And I found myself... But it's not quite, is it? No, it's not at all. Uh, yeah. It's like my own is... Uh, like the vowel sounds are quite different here than they are at home. So I, I find myself slipping into my well, own. Well, you do want... Okay, like... But we had... We Jake, had, quit it. Just say that now like you would be at home. Uh, Jake, quit it. Or Jake, f*** <laughs> up that now. <laughs> you won't be able to use that. No, well, I'll be good. Uh, it gives it colour. I have to learn. I have to work at you it do, all the time. Wow. But we had a fantastic dialect coach called Janine Pearson who worked with a lot of us on this and uh, she gave us uh, uh, she gave us all confidence to 
to basically not to you know to overdo it or anything right. just so we we sound like we're f vaguely from the community if you could be any other character on the show who would you be oh that's a good question uh a crocker or somebody like that yes. or becker i'd really like to be a nasty person on this maybe show. there's an evil twin would maybe maliki no that's a that's a really good idea stephanie <laughs> I think that's a really good idea. Are you giving us any? Think, are you winking should, at me? No, Is that not, a wink? I'm not winking at all, but I think it's one that should be explored. An idea that should season be five. Pressed. Yeah. I got another great idea. Free stuff. Thanks to our good friends at E1 Films. I've got the box sets for seasons one, two, and three up for grabs. For true RFD fans, there's nothing better. You get every episode plus cool bonus features like behind the scenes stunts, stellar music, and my favorite, the commentary. As Alan Hako leads the team of talkers, you can learn and laugh about their days on the Doyle set. Buy them for yourself at Fred's Records in St. John's, Video Difference in Halifax, and at Truro Home Video 2, or win them all right now by telling us the name of the blockbuster movie director and Gander NL native who directed three episodes for season four of Doyle. Once you know it, hit the website. It's www.cnbc.com. Click on the TV free stuff box and enter to win. Good luck and we'll be right back with the whole cast for Do You Know Doyle? Before we head into season four in its totality, we need to recap season three. So we're asking each of the cast members the same 10 questions to see how well they know it. Starting with Mark O'Brien. Well, I will preface this with, I forget stuff easily. Is that Go. true? Okay. Yeah. Question number one. At the end of season two, we saw Leslie Bennett crying behind her front door. Where do we first see her in season three? Um, what was she doing? She was, uh, she was a traffic. Yes! Yeah, she was doing traffic. She was traffic. She was, tra she was cars. She is directing traffic. Police. Yep, traffic cop. Traffic cop. At Prescott and Duckworth. There you go. Right by the Tim Hortons, and I have a cute story about that. One of the girls in Tim Hortons came rushing out and was trying to tell her to stop being so rude to the traffic. She thought it was a real cop. Oh, my gosh. And she got into the shot. She was that in the movie. Funny. <laughs> Love it. Okay. <clears throat> Jake and Mal are working a repo job in episode 302 when Dez gets hit by a vehicle. Yes. What are they there to repossess? A car. A motorcycle. A boat. Does the name Ruth mean anything to you? <laughs> I don't know. What are they repossessing? A boat. A house. A truck. A... A... G g a coffin? No, wrong. In episode 302, Jake and Mal are working a repo job when Des gets hit by a car. What are they repossessing? Uh, snowmobiles? Yes! No! Yes! Actually? Yes! Skidoo, skidoo, strikes and bikes. We shot that in the ghouls, actually. <laughs> and just down the street from that is where Shannon Tweed and Gene Simmons were hanging out with me on set, where, when I was a kid, I used to go drinking, <laughs> listening to Kiss and probably thinking about Shannon Tweed. That's trippy. I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> In episode 308, Two Jakes and a Baby, Leslie has a dream. Besides Jake, who are the other two characters in the scene? Uh, Rose? Mal and Hood? Okay, I know the dream, and she's, and, and <laughs> rapid fire answers. Woo, just peeling them off. What? Oh, me and Mel! <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Yeah, we're standing in the hallway at the hotel, or the hospital, and she comes by and just kind of, and we were drinking beer. <laughs> I'm so glad she answered that I one. Was I was worried. I was there. Mark Critch. Yes, in I know In season him. one, played Ned Bishop. He was a taxi driver. Yeah. In season three, he returns doing two other jobs. Give me one of them. He was a hooker. Pimp? <laughs> some sort of, some sort of vagabond. Uh, no, he was a jewel guy. He was working, or he, no, he was at a pawn shop. Right. Pawn shop. Pawn shop. And, yeah. and want to go for the other one, or? Uh, I'm going to go with Hooker. I'm going to stay with <laughs> Hooker. Because I know it's accurate. He works in an antique shop. Yes, a pawn shop. We will accept yeah. that. The other one, a, a mechanic. Yeah. Okay, episode 309, Mirror, Mirror. Mm -hmm. It comes very clear that Jake and Leslie are still in love. In which language do they profess their affection? French. Yes. French. French. French, French baby. I'll say. And everyone's gotten that worry. Um, uh, in episode It'd three, be really weird if it was Spanish or something. No. <laughs> German. C. Definitely. Episode three thirteen, the explosive season finale. Who discovers the bomb at Doyle and Doyle? Des. 
Des. No. Me? <laughs> Rose. Okay. Uh, Des. No, it wasn't me. No. Uh, <laughs> the explosive season finale. Who finds the bomb at Doyle and Doyle? Jonathan Goad playing Christian. Yes. Christian Doyle. Yes, a lot of people scripts. have been saying you, but you're well, the guy that diffused <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <clears throat> Episode 309, Maury Specker is trying to escape. His escape is foiled by Jake. What mode of transportation was he going to take? He was going to take a boat. He was going to take a plane. He was going to train. A car. A bike. What mode of transportation was he planning to use? A coffin. A hearse. A coffin in her. I'm thinking season two, season three. Oh, season three. Oh, she's trying to confuse me. Season three. Um, his mouth. Oh, a boat. <laughs> the same mode that TC own in Magnum PI. <laughs> Helicopter. <laughs> Shannon Tweed, NL native, returns to her homeland to star in the Republic of Doyle. She thinks Rose has taken what that belongs to her? Like a load of televisions. A bunch of TVs and a truck. TVs. Flat screen TVs. TVs. Yes, flat screen TVs. Flat screen Why TV. does everybody know that answer? I don't know, because everybody's after stealing a few TVs, right? <laughs> We're all after having a go with that. Yeah. I brought some, I got some with me now. I saw one from the studio earlier. It's a nice one, too. Russell Crowe, Academy Award winner. Great performance. Not much was spent on his wardrobe budget. Please describe it. A hoodie. It was a hoodie. A hoodie. A hoodie. Yeah, a hoodie. <laughs> hoodie. Gray t-shirt, blue jeans. Right. The entire show. Did he complain about that? No, well, he got to really kind of choose whatever he wanted. Is that true? Yeah, of course he's Russell Crowe. <laughs> We're going to do say, Russ, no, man. <laughs> you got to wear the hoodie. <laughs> but, mate, I'd rather wear something else. No, Russ, listen to me. It's all about the hoodie. And the final question, Jake's ex-wife, Nikki, um, hires Jake to investigate her husband. Where does he track him down? Uh, the massage parlor. The dirty massage parlor. Massage parlor, massage parlor. Oh, a massage parlor. An erotic massage parlor, maybe? <laughs> massage parlor. Right? Right. Yeah. Just the way you said it, okay. it was kind of creepy. Like, it was yeah, a little yeah. creepy. Because he was creepy. I was trying to match the tone of what was happening with the masseuses. To watch this show again or any episode of CNBCN.com, visit BellAlliant.net. They're all there on demand. And we had too much fun to squeeze into one half hour, so head to CNBCN.com for extended interviews with the entire cast, plus a bonus feature interview with R of DR director Peter Blackie. Oh my goodness, what a show. We'll see you next time on CNBC. Tune in Sunday nights to CBC. <gasps> Republic of Doyle, you won't believe what's going to happen. I'm coming. I think dinner's ready. See ya.